Well, um, Lady Dufferin, who owns the Candy Boy estate, um, approached us earlier this year. And although we're technically not a, a, a gallery firm, we're a firm of auctioneers, Adams Auctioneers in Dublin, um, we felt there was great synergy between both what we do and the gallery end of the business. The exhibition that we have running here until the 29th of April isn't a sort of a selling show. What it is, it's partly a loan exhibition um, from clients. We've borrowed pictures of, um, that we would have sold to clients in the past. And then part of it is a preview of um, pictures that are coming up for sale in our um, important Irish art sale on the 2nd of June. Well, the pieces that we have on show for the next couple of weeks um, would be museum quality pieces. Um, probably the picture at the end wall would be the star of the show. Um, it's a work, um, a still life from 1951 by William Scott. Now, what's interesting about that particular work is that it was actually the largest work that he had done up to that time. And it was done specially for the Festival of Britain exhibition in 1951. So it's quite a dramatic work. It was on show and on loan to the um, F.E. McWilliam Museum in Banbridge last year for their very good William Scott exhibition. So as well as that, we also have a smaller, earlier um, William Scott um, candle and cards from the 1940s. Um, the exhibition we've put on solely because we were opening in Ulster, we decided just to theme it the Ulster artists. And not to blow their trumpet, but actually some of the finest painters of the 20th century all did come from Ulster. So in the exhibition, I've probably divided the walls. Um, I have a very traditional wall on the left-hand side, um, and that would include the likes of Charles Lamb. Derry killed an adopted Ulster man because he went, and, and, uh, went to live in Donegal and presented his house and collection um, to the state. Um, among the Paul Henrys that we have, we have the very fine lobster pot fisherman which um, Dr. Brian Kennedy chose to put on the front cover of the Paul Henry book. So that would give you an idea of the quality of the work that's actually on show in the exhibition. Um, another interesting work on the traditional side would be the William Connor, the jaunting car. That was the original picture that um, had been chosen um, by the Haverty Trust to go and present to the Ulster Museum. But the, when William Connor heard that it was going to the Ulster Museum, he actually ended up painting a bigger version of it. Um, and then on the other wall, and probably um, more interesting sort of in some ways, um, and probably better known, um, we have a, a collection of works probably from the, starting in the 1930s right up to the 1960s. And they would include the work of um, Dan O'Neill, Gerard Dillon, Colin Middleton, and Nora McGuinness. Uh, the earliest of these would be these very fine um, surreal works by Colin Middleton. Um, the Bride, for instance, uh, dates from 1938. And probably Colin Middleton was our only surreal, true surrealist um, Irish painter. But as you can see from just looking around, some of these works, I mean, they are museum quality. They're, they would be at home in, on the walls of the Ulster Museum. And many of them had actually in the past been on loan to the National Gallery for the reopening of the um, Millennium Wing um, there. And then I suppose the true, um, and in some ways the star in my mind, um, is John Luke. Mm -hmm. And we have two works on um, oil, uh, uh, oil tempera on, on board. And probably the most significant one um, would be the Dancer in Bubble. And that dates from 1947. Now, John Luke was unique in Irish painting in being able to, to capture this um, paint method. And he, what he, by using the, the, the tempera on gesso panelled or gesso prepared board, he managed to go and get this sort of effervescence and beautiful colouring that you know other artists, many artists have tried, but um, very few have actually succeeded. Um, so, as I said, he would, in my mind, would be synonymous with um, Ulster painters. But then you have sort of early Gerard Dillon's, like um, the, this one of the jockey. This would be um, painted down on Omi Island, which is a, an island off the coast um, of Galway, down near Rhinestone. Um, it's connected by a causeway, and um, like many places around Ireland, they do have sort of these pony races during the summer. And you can see here that the sort of the, the jockey is obviously giving some of the local children just a little ride on the on the pony. And from the same period, you'd have digging the turf um, by um, Gerard Dillon, which again would be late 40s, early 50s. Um, 
And among the, the Dan O'Neills that would stand out, we have probably works from the 1940s again, date running right up to two bouquets, which would date from the 19... That would be from the early 70s. I think it's around 1970, 1970, um, 1971. So on the um, contemporary front, we would have local artist um, Mark Shields, um, quite a large um, dramatic work um, by him from a few years ago, again um, from a private collection. Surprisingly or not surprisingly, everybody's favourite so far who've come into the gallery have, has been the J.P. Vallely. Um, and I suppose he is a well-known musician as well as a painter and thus he captures something in people's imagination and the folk musicians. And then again on the contemporary front we have the, this very busy dramatic work by Hector MacDonald of Donnelly's shop in Ballycastle and just the, the, the detail and the, the quality of the sort of that you can nearly feel that you could eat some of those sweets and things um, off, the, off the shop counter. Um, probably of significance and probably your grand master at the moment would be Basil Blackshaw and again we have a very good example of Basil's work uh, in one of the fighting cocks. Now uh, we've got a, quite an interesting schedule lined up for the rest of the year. Um, in late May, early June the Fine Arts Society from London are actually using the AVA Gallery um, for an exhibition of Sir John Lavery and the Glasgow Boys and then we officially open full time in August, and that's in time for the um, Clandy Boy Festival with Camerata Ireland.